Stop, Dick. Stop what? Stop hiding your figs under the toast. <laughs> Joanna, don't be silly. I'm not hiding figs under my toast. <laughs> well, what do you know, figs? We talked about this before. Now you've got to start eating better, and that means getting more fruit in your diet. I don't like people telling me how to eat. That's why I became a grown-up. <laughs> He's not eating his figs. I was saving them for dessert. <laughs> Just try them. They're delicious. I hate figs. They're full of vitamins. I hate vitamins. That's dumb. Why would anybody hate vitamins? Because they come in things like figs. <laughs> I'm gonna faint. I really think I'm gonna faint. Stop clowning, Kirk. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. Oh, God. I don't think he's lying. Oh, God. No. Let's oh, get him to a chair. Kirk, Kirk. What happened? Take it easy. Take it easy. Here, I'll here. get a cold towel. I'll get him some water. I'll get him some figs. Dick. <laughs> Kirk, what's the matter? A man just held up my cafe. What? What? Was anyone hurt? No, fortunately, being breakfast, the place was empty. <laughs> well, what, what happened? This guy came into my cafe. He looked like all my other customers. Hostile, nervous, trembling. <laughs> I said, can I help you? He said, yeah. Then he grabbed my radio off the counter and threatened to hit me over the head with it if I didn't give him all my money. He actually said that? I think so. <laughs> all I could really hear was Melissa Manchester singing, Don't Cry Out Loud. <laughs> How, how much money did he get? All my life savings, $2,000. $2,000? You said you were broke. How'd you save $2,000? Same way as everybody else. It was my tax refund. <laughs> Kirk, this is terrible. Did you call the police? No, no. I was too upset to do anything like that. You, uh, you should call your insurance company. Them I called. <laughs> well, then just try to calm down. You weren't hurt, and your insurance company will reimburse you for everything. I hope so. I don't know. I don't trust anyone anymore. Kirk, it was just one incident. You, you can't stop trusting people. You don't know what it feels like to be threatened like that. I was terrorized, Dick. There's no telling what kind of psychological trauma I may have suffered. Right now, I'm, a, I'm afraid to walk out on the street again. Kirk, is there anything I can do? How about a movie? <laughs> Here you go. You'll be in room eight, and I'll have somebody bring your bags up in a minute. Uh, thank you. Oh, Dick, this is Mr. and Mrs. Powell. They're spending their honeymoon with us. Oh, congratulations. We hope you enjoy your stay here. Thank you. I'm sure we will. <laughs> well, here we go. Oh, I always think that's so romantic. Why didn't you ever carry me over the threshold? We talked about that, remember? We did? Yeah, I asked you if you wanted to go through a basically sexist tradition, and probably the two of us look like idiots, and you said, I guess not. Hi. I'm looking for the owner. Hi. You found him. <laughs> Hi. Tom Carson, World Mutual Home and Casualty. Oh, Dick Loudon, and we don't need any insurance. <laughs> Mr. Loudon, we're the uh, insurance carrier for the Minuteman Cafe. I'm investigating the robbery they had over there earlier this week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just making my report. Need to ask a few neighbors some uh, routine questions concerning Mr. Devane's character. Well, I can certainly vouch for the fact that he's a character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How long have you known Mr. Devane? Uh, actually, not, not that long. But during the time you have known him, uh, he's impressed you as being uh, pretty reputable? Yes. Yes, he's... He's pretty, uh, pr pretty reputable. <laughs> of course, you know, it depends on your definition of, of reputable. <laughs> Would you say he's uh, basically an honest person? Yes. <laughs> basically. I'm just trying to determine whether or not Mr. Devane is an honest man. And I sense some evasiveness on your part. <laughs> I'm, uh, 
C certainly not, not trying to be evasive. <laughs> but then would you please just answer the question, yes or no? What, what question is that? Is Mr. Devane honest? Look, I, I'm sure Kirk didn't lie about the robbery. Are you saying he lies about other things? He, he fibs. He, he, um, <laughs> he, he fits for fun. He's, he's, a, he's a fun fibber. <laughs> Mr. Loudon, what you're saying is very serious. No, 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 it isn't. Yes, it is. You're saying Mr. Devane can't be trusted. I never, I never said that. Never said what? I, I never said that Kurt couldn't be trusted. You say that all the time. <laughs> Who's this? Uh, George Utley. Do you know Kirk Devane? Sure. If you had to, would you describe him as basically honest or basically dishonest? Well, that depends. <laughs> On what? Who are you? <laughs> this is uh, Mr. Carson. He's investigating the robbery at Kirk's Cafe. See, anytime anyone claims to be robbed and we don't know whether or not they're telling the truth, we have to investigate. Well, I know Kirk is telling the truth. How do you know that? Well, because when Kirk told us about it, Dick said, I don't think he's lying this time. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank both of you gentlemen very much for your help. Uh, Mr. Carson, I, I hope we didn't give you the wrong impression of Kirk. Don't think so. <laughs> Shoot. What's wrong? Oh, I think I got Kirk in trouble. I feel like a traitor. I feel like the, the worst kind of turncoat. Oh, I feel the same way. Well, why? You didn't do anything. No, I meant about you. <laughs> that was delicious. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, we will. <laughs> Honey, I'm so glad you decided to let me make you a healthy breakfast for a change. Well, I guess one healthy breakfast isn't going to kill me. I know after you eat this, you're going to have more energy and you're going to feel better all day. Morning, Dick. <laughs> morning, morning, George. Would you uh, pass the butter, please? Pass the jam. <laughs> you pass the syrup, please. powdered sugar I can't eat this all right I'll get you a stack of cholesterol and fat do you want to explain to me what happened over here yesterday <laughs> Kirk, what are you talking about I'm talking about someone singing like a canary to the insurance investigator all right dick here's your breakfast oh sure sing like a bird eat like a pig <laughs> Is there a problem, Kirk? Problem? When that investigator left my cafe yesterday, everything was fine. Now he's snooping all over town, asking people questions about me. Apparently, someone has led him to believe I might not be telling the truth. I guess that would be Dick. <laughs> Kirk, Dick didn't tell the investigator anything he couldn't have heard from a hundred other people. But he might not have talked to a hundred other people if Dick hadn't told him I was a liar. I only said you lied occasionally. Couldn't you have stretched the truth? That was stretching the truth. <laughs> well, thanks to you, I'm trapped now. What do you mean? They've asked me to drive up to Burlington this afternoon to take a lie detector test. What's wrong with that? What if I don't pass? Kirk, if you're telling the truth about the robbery, you, you have nothing to fear. Dick, you know how I am. There's something inside me that won't allow me to tell the truth. I'm just afraid if they hook me up to that machine, I'll burst into flames. 
Right, would it make you feel better if I went along with you? Are you volunteering because you're my friend or because you feel guilty? Because I feel guilty. <laughs> Kirk, if you want me to, I'll go with you. Thank you, Leslie, but I'd, I'd never drag someone I care about down into this slimy, seamy mess. I'll take Dick. <laughs> If I pass out, you won't let my head hit the floor, will you? <laughs> Kirk, relax. It's going to be fine. This is all so sick, Dick. Hooking people up to machines, probing their minds, injecting them with electrical impulses, making them pay for parking. <laughs> Kirk, you don't have to go through this. I do if I want to get what's rightfully mine. The money I got from cheating on my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Devane, here's the water you asked for. Thanks. Could you throw it on the machine? <laughs> Uh, he's joking. And now, uh, Mr. Devane, as I said before, I'll be instructing you through the test. Uh -huh. You'll be asked a series of questions in random order. Your answers will be uh, registered according to your blood pressure, restoration, and skin response, so it is important that you remain calm. Calm. <laughs> Remember, all of your responses are to be yes, yes. or no. Yes or no. Do you understand? Yes. Very well. Let's begin. Is your name Kirk Devane? Yes. Are you a resident of Vermont? Yes. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Yes. <laughs> Are you in this country illegally? Yes. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Kirk, Kirk, you're not even listening to the questions. What? You're not listening to what he's asking. What did he say? <laughs> Why uh, don't we begin again? Now, yes. just relax and pay attention. Okay, yes. Is your name Kirk Devane? Yes. Do you run the Minuteman Cafe? Yes. Do you use illegal narcotics on a regular basis? Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute, he's doing it again. I don't understand. I'm not getting any variation. <laughs> you mean the, the machine isn't registering that, he, that he's lying? It barely registers anything. The pens haven't moved. According to this, he's in a coma. Well, may, uh, maybe the machine's broke. No, it, uh, it was working earlier today. Would you mind answering a few questions uh, just to test it? Uh, me? Well, it will only take a minute. Uh, here, just let me, uh, let me get you uh, unfastened here. There you go, you're free. Uh, would you stand up, please? Yes. <laughs> Kirk, would you hold my coat? Yes. <laughs> this, uh, this must be fascinating work. Yes. Never, never taken a polygraph test before, but then, then again, why, why would I? <laughs> what, uh, what do they call you? Uh, polygraphers? Polygraphists? Lie guys? <laughs> the, uh, the actual term is uh, polygraph examiner, but uh, you can call me Polly. <laughs> There, now, that does it. Now, remember to relax. Make all of your responses yes or no. Right. I, I mean yes. <laughs> Fine, then let's begin. Is your name Dick Loud? Yes. No. <laughs> my, uh, my, my friends call me, call me Dick, but my, my name is, is Richard Loud. Just answer yes or no. These aren't trick questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Are you a resident of Vermont? Yes, no. <laughs> what, what I mean is I, I live here now, but uh, I've only lived here for a couple months, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not sure I'm a legal resident. I'm doing it again, aren't I? It's all right. Uh, you do show that the instrument is definitely working. 
Well, then how, how do you explain his test? I can explain it. For some reason, he doesn't register on a polygraph. Well, what, what does this mean? If he doesn't register, it means there's nothing I can do to support his claim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too, Craig. Looks like the only way I'm going to get my money back now is to go out and find the guy who stole it. How are you going to do that? We'll ask around. We'll start with the seediest place in town. That would be your place. Okay, we'll start with the second seediest place. <laughs> This, this is crazy. It's not crazy. This is the kind of place where crummy people hang out. Hi, Kirk. Hi. Nice How's it going? Good to see you. Hi, Kirk, what, what are we doing here? Looking for my robber. What do you gentlemen have? Look, we don't have time to order. We just want to know if you've seen anybody around here who might be a vicious criminal. What are you talking about? His cafe was robbed. He's trying to find out who did it. You must be from the Minuteman. See, they have heard about it. Everybody's heard about it. Oh, yeah. We were talking, and we figured whoever did it must be from out of town. Why's that? Well, because no one from this town would go in there. <laughs> did you want anything on the menu? No, no. Let's go. Just give me one last shot at it. What are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything embarrassing. I'm just going to offer a reward for any information leading to the arrest, conviction, and execution of the person who did it. <laughs> Kirk, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to make a plea for help, Dick. These people, cruddy as they are, are still my neighbors. And around here, neighbors are always willing to lend a hand. People, hello. Everyone, can you listen up, please, just for a second? Can you just listen up? Thank you. As you may or may not know, the Minuteman Cafe was robbed last week. <laughs> Say, would you teach me how to do that? Do what? So, George, why do you want to learn how to sew? Well, every once in a while, I knock a button off of one of my shirts, and I'd like to be able to sew it back on. This is one of your shirts. Oh, uh, well, never mind. <laughs> there you are. I thought you guys would have been back hours ago. How did the test go? You know how a vampire doesn't show up in a mirror? Kirk doesn't show up on a lie detector test. What do you mean? It was a waste of time. The test didn't prove anything. Well, if the test didn't prove anything, what happens now? Well, we don't know for sure, but it, it doesn't look good. Two thousand hard-earned bucks down the drain. Look, Kirk, I, I, know you're, I know you're feeling lousy, but I, it, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You know, you're right, Dick. I feel totally better. <laughs> All right, I, I know it's a cliche, but uh, instead of feeling down, just, you know, count your blessings. Okay, let's count them. I'm broke, I'm alone, I have no credibility, and I'm good looking. That's one out of four. You know, I've been listening to you all day go on like this, and I'm, I'm trying to be sympathetic, but I, I think you're overlooking one thing. I mean, this, this whole ordeal is your fault. Let's give a hand for the most insensitive man in America. It's not insensitive, it's true. It's, uh, this whole ordeal is the, the classic story of the, the little boy that cried wolf. What story is that? <laughs> you never heard the story about the little boy that cried wolf? Nope. Well, it's a, it's a story about this, this little shepherd boy, and he was out watching over his lambs. His what? His lambs. You mean his sheep. Lambs are sheep. Honey, there's no such thing as a flock of lambs. I didn't say flock. It could have been a, a pair of lambs. I always heard it was goats. All right, whatever. 
<laughs> anyway, the, the point is, he, he was out watching over his herd of whatever, and, and he was bored. And he thought it'd be fun to, to run into town and, and tell everyone that, that he had seen a wolf. He cried wolf. What? Honey, I don't mean to interrupt, but you said the little boy went into town and told everyone he'd seen a wolf. Actually, he cried wolf, and the whole town came running. No, no, uh, the way I heard it, uh, only his mother and father came running. I thought everybody came running right away. But what, what difference does it make? It doesn't make any difference. Why are you telling the story? Uh, j just hear me out. The, the little shepherd boy kept crying wolf because he enjoyed fooling people. But he had cried wolf so much that when a wolf really came, no one believed him and no one came to help him. Is there supposed to be a point to this? Yes, the wolf ate his lambs. Sheep. Goats. I, I, thought, I thought the wolf ate the little boy. I don't care if the wolf ate the whole damn town. I mean, the moral of the story is that someone or, or something somewhere somehow got, got eaten by the wolf because the little shepherd boy lied and no one believed him anymore. This is a religious story, isn't it? Dad? <laughs> no. Don't you understand what he's saying? If you lie all the time, no one's going to believe you. Even if you're telling the truth? That's right. That's exactly what happened here. All your chickens have come home to roost. <laughs> Why are you suddenly obsessed with livestock? to say is that when you were telling all those lies they may have seemed harmless but at a time like this you see it's really important that people believe you all right just just give me a second to uh, think about this you're saying the two thousand dollars i lost is paying for all the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of senseless and stupid lies i've told in the course of my life i think that's right it's not fair <laughs> who said life was fair uh, that, that might have been me. <laughs> now, let me get this straight. You all know the story, right? Yeah. Who told it to you? Our parents. Yeah. Can I use your phone, Dick? Sure. Hi, Mom. This is Kirk. Oh, come on, don't, don't start crying. I know it's been a long time. Since 1978? Vermont. Yeah, I own a little cafe. Look, I, I don't have time to chit-chat. Mom, why didn't you ever tell me the story about the little boy who cried wolf? Well, they said it was a wolf. Oh. <laughs> of course I love you. Do I have to keep telling you that over and over and over again? Every five years, I love you. 